let you know how great it is to have you here for the Greater Purpose Podcast. What's up? Welcome to the Greater Purpose Podcast from the Cubs Room. <laughs> Sam, what do you think of the Cubs Room? Oh, amazing. <laughs> Man, this is uh, one of a kind. Uh, there you one go. of a kind. We're going to introduce this guy in just a minute. Before we do that, i got to do my due diligence. Make sure you visit the-greater-purpose.com. You can catch up on all of the YouTube, uh, uh, all the podcasts. You can catch up on some other things that are going on. My my executive producer is an Avon rep. Guess who my executive producer is? Who's that? My wife. <laughs> my wife, Donna. She, uh, so you can get Avon there if you need skin so soft or, you know, whatever, bug spray, whatever you need. Uh, but, yeah, so uh, the-greater-purpose.com. And our, exe- our producer, who is Stephen Wright, is not here today. He was aware of the podcast, so I don't know where he is. Okay. Uh, but, you know, he's a really busy man, a very important man. So you don't <laughs> want to bother him with, with stuff like that. So uh, I don't think there's anything I need to introduce yet other than that. And so I think we can go. Oh, wait. Yeah, the greater, pur- the greater purpose of a godly man men's conference is April 27th. Okay. So you want to make sure you get your e-ticket, go online, search the greater purpose of a godly man. Mm-hmm. And on Facebook and on e-tickets, I think it is, mm-hmm. you can get your electronic ticket. Mm-hmm. The electronic ticket is not required, mm-hmm. but if you don't have a ticket, you don't get fed. So you want to have a ticket. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, Sam was a speaker for us last year, uh, so we're glad to have him for the podcast today. You guys know him as the Jesus Saves Man out there in Charlotte, right? And you've, you've seen him all over uh, media, and this man is an awesome inspiration. Sam Bethea, uh, so glad to have you here, my friend. Glad to be here, brother. Glad to be yeah, here. Yeah, so, uh, so tell us first, tell everybody out there who is Sam Bethea. Uh, well, simply, in a nutshell, Sam Bethea is a sinner saved by grace. Amen? Yes, sir. So um, I was born October 9th, 1971 in Washington, D.C. My dad was in the military, so we stayed in uh, Andrews Air Force Base. I didn't grow up in a military, excuse me, a military home. I grew up in a military home, but I did not grow up in a Christian home. Ah. Um, my mom, my dad never prayed with me. Mm. Not one time that they wow. ever to this day prayed with me, you know. Mm. Um, so I said that to say they, they divorced at about age 14, 15, which right. was a crucial part of my life yeah. where I was trying to find my, pl- my place in life and yeah. my identity. Yeah. And, um, uh went through some problems and um chose uh mama kept us in the you know uh middle class neighborhood but she worked all the time right so with that being said i chose a life that um, was contrary to her will and um, how i was raised and um that was being out there in the streets with my friends right. that ended up being my quote unquote family mm-hmm. and that led me down a long dark path and that path led me uh to run ins with the law from the age of 16 to 26, wow. 29 times I was in the Mecklenburg County Jail. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. Yeah. So at the age of 26 at a Walmart, I'm working at a Walmart, Walmart yeah. and make a long story short, no, that's good. I, had a, I had a question about capital punishment that me and my coworkers were talking. So I, kn- I didn't know this man personally, but I come to find out he was a pastor. Mm-hmm. And just so happened the day that conversation was going, he was in the snack shop. Mm-hmm. So I went over there and I asked him about capital punishment. He invited me to have a seat. We had about an hour and a half conversation, mm-hmm. and um, he shared with me the Old Testament, I for an I, two for a tooth, yeah. by one man's blood shed, another man's blood is required. Mm-hmm. Then he explained to me the New Testament, the Lamb of God, Jesus mm-hmm. Christ, who takes away the sins of the world. Yeah. And then he asked me this trillion dollar question. Trillion dollar. And that trillion dollar question was, if Sam, if you would take your last breath, yeah. and you stood before a holy God, and God asked you, Sam, why should I let you into my kingdom? Mm-hmm. What would you tell him? And I was like a deer in headlights, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because right. I'm thinking, okay, I don't want a lot of this, man. He's a pastor, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <by him. laughs> yeah. He's the closest to God that I know. So I was like, I'm just going to be honest with you. I believe that there's a God and a devil. I believe there's a heaven and a hell. I said, I love God, and I've done a lot of dirt in my life. I said, but um, 
I asked God to forgive me. Yeah. And I said, I hope God lets me come into his kingdom when I take my last breath. This old 68-year-old white man mm -hmm. looked a 26-year-old young black boy in his, in his eyes yeah. and told me, by the words out of your mouth, you're going to hell. Wow. I want to say, okay, sir, have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, he's a pastor. Where's the love? Yeah. Keep yeah. working. Keep doing a good job. Yeah. That's what I thought on my ear. Sure. But um, I'm glad I did not be disrespectful or rude and walk off from that man because he told me yeah. the truth. Yeah. Um, and our mother raised us to respect the elders, respect our you know individuals around. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I'm going to listen to this old man. But um, when he puts a period in this conversation, I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I stood there and I listened to him and he said, I tell you, by the words out of your mouth, mm -hmm. he said, you're going to hell because you're trying to go to God the Father without coming through his son, Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Right. And it was like a light bulb. Wow. Aha moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he was right. I believed what I knew about Jesus, the miracles and what I had read. And I believed him, you know, even being crucified and resurrected. I believed all that. Yeah. Um, what little bit I knew at that time. But I did not have a personal relationship right. Right. with him. Mm -hmm. And right there. Uh, March 1997 at a snack shop, Walmart snack Walmart shop. Snack shop. That's Sam right. Bethany died, wow. and yeah. Jesus Christ came alive. Amen. So I tell people, not only do you save money at Walmart, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> saved lives. All right, that's awesome. <laughs> save, savings at Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The new, all the new That's great. So 26. So yeah. you're going to tell us how old you are now? 97. So I can yeah, add, but yeah. I'm not going to add. 52. 52. Okay, yeah. so that's great. So half of your life. Yeah, that's and cool. this is your 52 yeah. Uh, broadcast, right? Yeah, this is a 52nd episode. <laughs> he's, he's 52. 52. Wow. Uh, he, he, you, so you were 26 when you got saved. Yes, sir. But what you don't know is I was 26. Oh, uh, uh, wow. Yeah. So did you but, I, but I'm older than 52. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm always picking my yeah. own. Yeah, appreciate that. <laughs> I'm, I'm closer to that old guy, the old white guy. That's, uh, that, that, yeah. Right. So did you feel when you came with uh, Christ at 26? I, this is one of the feelings. I, I felt like I was 50. Like, yeah. why didn't somebody yeah. tell yes, me yes, yes, yes. sooner or why didn't I come yeah. earlier? You know, I tell people all the time that I had an advantage. I was actually an atheist. Mm. I didn't believe anything mm. about God. Mm. But I tell people I haven't had an advantage. And, and even now, f still feel an advantage because when I got saved, mm. I knew I was saved. Mm, I amen. knew that he had completely yeah. changed me. Right. He had completely washed me. Mm. And I was a brand new mm. man. I never had a doubt. Mm -hmm. So, but mm. that's because of everything I saw before that, just mm. like you, you right. saw some of the stuff we saw. So, but, but this is about you. So we're going to, now we've tried to do a, a Facebook uh, live yeah, here. It's okay. I'm, it's, okay. I'm it, You want to try to. Yeah. I'm just going to hit the button. Okay. Yeah. We're I'm listening though. Go ahead, brother. No, you're good. I don't want yeah. to, I don't want this to interrupt. It's okay. No, no, it's fine. Listen, we have fun on here. We are just, we're just, we're just, <laughs> we're back. Back. We're back. <laughs> yeah. So, so here's the thing you're, you're seeing the podcast on a certain date, but, um, Sam is doing a Facebook, Facebook live, live today. So it's a different date. So don't be confused, <laughs> but it's all good. We're having fun. And good, so, yeah. all right. So let's jump right into our topics here. Okay. So we know that that was when, was that when you first realized Hey, I need to become a godly man, or was it a progressive thing? Hmm. Was it within the first week? Was hmm. it a month? Was it right, a year? When did right. you actually say, "Okay, right. I'm I'm not being a godly man. I need right, to be a godly right. man." Good question. Yeah. Good question. So that it, for me, it was a progress. Yes. Now, when I got saved, I was a radical, yeah. fanatical. Yeah. You know, I was like in stories you read when Jesus had an encounter. Yeah. You know, the the de demoniac man yeah. cutting himself yeah. in the tomb, breaking oh. chains, but. Yeah. Then he had an encounter with Jesus and he and wanted he to go with Jesus. Yes. He wasn't, it, you know, yeah. that was me. I had a radical change, brother, and I want to tell everybody. That's awesome. That's good. But the process of understanding about being a man of God for me, yeah. it took time. Yeah. Like I said, I'm 52, been walking with the Lord almost 25 years. Mm -hmm. So it took me a while to get it. Right. And yeah, good question though. Okay. But yeah. some people get it like that. But for me, yeah. I, I, and, and I think part of the issue with me, I didn't have that man in my life right. to say, good job, son. You're doing a good yep. job. Or son, you're not doing that right. You can do better. You know, I didn't have a father figure, so to say, in my life. Yeah. So, yeah. well, and I, and I got, I got saved in the church. Mm -hmm. So, uh, at 26, like I said, so I had, I was surrounded by 
really good disciples mm. and, 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 and men of all ages Very important. that I could look at mm-hmm. and say, okay, this is, this is what a godly man is supposed mm-hmm. to look like. So mm-hmm. I'm not saying that's when I got it. Right. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. Was, yeah. So that was the difference I think in ours. So, so who would you say now, obviously that gentleman, that 68 mm-hmm. year old gentleman was inspirational mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to you becoming a godly man. Mm-hmm. Is there, who else? Well, who are some others? Maybe? Well, de- definitely that brother was, he was my father figure. Wow. He was, um, so that was he, a lasting relationship. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So we met in 97 mm-hmm. and as a result of me coming to Christ through his witness or whatnot at that mm-hmm. snack shop. I wanted to go to Hickory Grove Baptist because my sister went there, but uh, my roommate at the time, he wanted to meet the man who led me to the Lord okay. because I told my friends at that time, I was like, look, guys, you know, because back in my days, we didn't have gangs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we called them crews yeah. or, you know what I mean? So we would have a, a clique or a crew, you know, and I'm talking about 20 guys at least, mm-hmm. sometimes That's larger family, than right? exactly yeah. my family. So when I started acting different, you know what I mean? Uh, they was sure. like, what's going on? Because, you know, I, they, one of the reasons I used to smoke like a choo-choo train. Uh, okay. I'm talking about smoking weed. Yeah. And we used to have ciphers, you know, sessions where we would sit in and just conversate, yeah. talk about life, talk about sin, yeah. and just smoke the blunt and pass right. it around. Right. And so um, that was one thing that was different that I, the Holy Spirit started convicting me. Yeah. You can't partake of that no more. Yeah. So they were like, what's the matter? You sick? What's going on? And then I was like, look, guys, you know, hey, I'm going to be honest with wow. you. I got saved. That's cool. I said, you know, I Man. accepted it. Jesus. What a great opportunity. Yeah. yeah. And I tell you, like, out of 20 to 30 guys, I'm telling you, at the most, um, talking about my clique, my crew, mm-hmm. only one of them was there to really, like, encourage me. Uh-huh. Everybody else, God took them either by force or by choice mm-hmm. out of my life. And I didn't want that to happen. Yeah. Because I was when I got saved, I was witness. I was yeah. witnessing. I was yeah. going hard for them. Sure. Like I was going hard for sin. I'm going hard. I love these. This is my family. I want y'all to see this man, Jesus. You know, like the yeah. Samaritan one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but only one brother came to me and really, and that was my roommate. And come to find out, he told me this. He said, Sam, I want to congratulate you. He said, Man, that's a good decision what you did. I'm happy for you. He said, You know, man, I wanted to lead you to Christ. I wanted to share Jesus with you. He said. Wow. But I couldn't. No way. And I was like, what do you mean you want to share Jesus? He said, man, I saw some, you know, characteristics in you. Like the Lord was working on wow. you. Like you had, you, you know, you had a heart or something. He, yeah, something. he saw something. I don't know. You know, he was telling me what he saw. But then he was like, but I couldn't do it. And I was like, why? And he was like, because I was doing what y'all were doing. Yeah. He was out there smoking and fornicating and doing everything we used to do. Mm-hmm. And he said he just felt convicted that he couldn't talk about Jesus. Sure. Living that same life, right. and so he read as a result of me getting saved, he rededicated his life, um, and then he wanted to meet the man that led me to the Lord. So that's why I went to his church, and then when I went to his church, I like I said, I went in there, and I didn't want to really go, but I went in there, and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm just gonna be mad. I'm gonna be honest yeah. with you. So when I opened the door, different, huh? Oh man, oh, what? Shot. Come on, big time. So when I opened the door, I'm gonna be honest. It was like I was in a, 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 a what I want to call it. I don't want to say old folks, but I want to say season saints. Right. Yeah, yeah, season yeah. saints. Be uh, careful now. Uh, yeah, season <laughs> saints. <laughs> retirement <laughs> home. Everybody in there was white, oh no gosh. melon, yeah. no Spanish, yeah. no Chinese, right. no black. And I was wow. like, Houston, we got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to leave, but the lo- they loved on they us. They right. Exactly. Awesome. They were loving on me. Yeah. God moved me to one group and God moved my friend to another group and mm-hmm. they were loving on us. It was an Easter Sunday, um, oh, sun, wow. sunrise. Yeah. And so um, they did what they called a Mayor's Walk around the church uh, oh, parking yeah. lot yeah. and out mm-hmm. to the parking lot reciting the Mayor's story and mm-hmm. praying and whatnot. Then they came into the, uh, back into the service and we had breakfast. And then after we had breakfast, uh, we had the morning Easter service. And, and we're glad you went. Right? And, 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 and by the <laughs> yeah. time it was yeah. all said and done, yeah. I knew in my heart, this oh, is where I belong. That's cool. That's cool. It's, like you say, it's a culture shock. I don't like sure. it. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't look right. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I come from that life, right? Yeah. A, a street life and whatnot. And part of that sin, my idols was fornicating, was women. Yeah. And so when I got saved, I wanted to do it right. 
You know what I mean? I, I love Jesus. Now I want to find me a wife. Right. I just want one good wife. You know what? So I want to go to a church where I can praise Jesus and look for a wife. Find a wife. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's okay. And that's the best place to find a house. You know? So, uh, yeah. but anyway, that ended up being my church. Nice. I'm still at that church to oh, the cool. day. Yeah. And that man, like I said, he was my mentor. He was my father figure. Nice. He was my best man at my wedding. Um, he mentioned his name. His name Fleet Kirkpatrick. Okay. Who went home to be with the Lord in 2013. Okay. Yeah, but uh, he founded the church where I met called Church of the Open Door in Charlotte, oh, okay. North Carolina. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Cool. All right, cool. So that's that's your major inspiration. That's mm -hmm. cool. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. See, guys, there's somebody out there that you are going to inspire. Mm -hmm. Amen. You are inspired by this man. Mm -hmm. Are you inspired by any man that's come comes mm -hmm. through the podcast or any man in your life? Mm -hmm. Then you can turn that around and inspire somebody else. Amen, Just brother. Remember that. Amen. So, so how do you feel like, okay, so I know how you're affecting people's mm -hmm. lives, mm -hmm. but specifically men, how do you feel like you are most effective mm -hmm. in, in building into yeah. other men's life? I know you're yeah. preaching to everybody mm -hmm. yeah. and I get that, but yeah. there's got to be some opportunities. I think oh, you've yeah. probably seen where it's a, a young man mm -hmm. or a boy or an older man, even mm -hmm. doesn't matter. But where do you feel like you've been able to really build into that? Yeah. So um, basically just by being a ministry of presence, mm -hmm. just being out there as Jesus was bumping elbows yeah. with them. And you do. Right? And you amen. Amen. Yeah. amen. So, you know, that's my street calling. Uh, what's the game? That's my calling yeah. today is street evangelizing. Yeah. So that's where I go. And I, I will, like you say, I'll proclaim and preach to anybody that will listen. Don't get me wrong, but. In my heart of hearts, if you ask me what I prefer, it would be the man. Okay. And this just recently, like, you know, maybe a couple of years, uh, you know, probably the last seven, eight years, just uh, a hunger for me. Right. You know, um, first I started prison ministry okay. and because being in jail, I never did time in prison, but. Being in jail 29 times, I know what it is. Oh, yeah, you, yeah, I can, you see me inside. I, of right. I can yeah, empathize yeah. with those guys. I feel your pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You listen. Now you got a captivated right, audience. Right, you know? right, right. So um, that was my first ministry. Then I wanted to do homeless ministries. And then I did a little church plant with the youth ministries. Mm -hmm. I was a youth pastor there and whatnot. So I've done all those ministries. But um, I think by far where I'm at now is so much joy, so much peace. Uh, it, it, it just, it, it, I have so much excitement. It, like I tell people, Jesus yeah. is never, it's never a dull moment in yeah, Jesus. Right. He's the light of the world and he lights it up. So I said that to say, when I'm out there, I will prefer to men. Yeah. You know, I will talk to anybody and everybody, proclaim, yeah. preach, counsel, pray, whatever you want to do. Everything that goes on in a church building goes on out there in the right, street. Sure. It's yeah. church. It's like true. they say, uh, the church has left the building. Yeah. When we believers get out there in the streets and be like Jesus bumping elbows, we are the body of Christ. We're the church. So I would prefer uh, the men. Yeah. And the reason why I say that, I've seen it. Right. When you get the men, I'm telling you, okay, if you, you know, reached out to ch children, I did it. I was a youth pastor at the church plant we did. And um, it was great. Parents came as a result of the kids. That right. was a good thing. Right. Uh, and if you focus on women, you're going to end up getting a women's group and women understand women better. Right. Yeah, sure. So you, you don't have that much yeah. say so in that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if you get the man, yeah, you, the you get the family, family sir. you get the family. Absolutely. And brother, that is so crucial, because like I said, I can I can, uh, you know, say uh, contrary to what it is the being raised in a Christian right. home. Right. I know. I'm not blaming my dad, but my dad did the best he could. He was a military yeah. man. Um, but I know I hindsight looking back, I needed that man. You needed that, right? I needed that man. And you yeah. noticed you notice that men, I think, now are are hungry and, and searching and ready to listen. Mm -hmm. Do you find that? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We're living in a way excuse me, way. We're living in a world now when people see a real man. It speaks volumes because we're living in a day and time where men are so passive. Right. Men yeah. don't have any backbone now. Right, right. They don't have any courage. They don't have any bonus. They, they, you know, they take the cruise control, so to say. They'll let the woman lead. If a woman has a better job, you provide for the family. I'll ride your coattail, yeah. which is not supposed not to be. Supposed to be right. Yeah. And then we see men, you know, men are, if we understood our worth. As you know, in God's eyes, or or sitting back in the church and not being mm -hmm. not being uh, 
not being the leader in the church, not being proactive in the community, right. not being proactive. The in high priest of the home. Yeah, exactly you, you know, right. you're the yeah. breadwinner. You're the high priest. Those people in your family, those precious souls are going to follow your lead. And so, yes, I love the men because, like I said, if I can influence the men, then the Holy Spirit through that witness and that minister to him, he can not only, you know, reach the man, yeah. but the family, you know? Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right. So um, we, we're going to move on to the next okay. top, the next section here. Okay. Alive. We're on yeah. Live. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. This is great. First time we've ever done a live at the same time. <laughs> cool. Multitask. So, well, and this is what's so cool about it. If you have not gone back and if you're watching today because you're watching Sam, that's awesome. But there, are, if you go back and, and look at the other podcast, there's always something different. Mm, there's every man that comes in here brings mm, something mm, completely different. A to different the story. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Variety. So, yeah. uh, variety, yeah. difference, change, yeah. Yeah. interesting <laughs> stuff. So sometimes we laugh, sometimes we cry. Sometimes I tried to get a guy to dance. He wouldn't do it. <laughs> One guy sang. We did get some to sing. Uh, another guy told a couple of jokes, you know. So we've well, we've done all kinds of. Well, stuff. I'm glad you let them share their gift. Dance. Now, before I leave, now, I wish I could dance. <laughs> I do got the gift. God gave me a gift yeah. to make a joyful noise. So before we end, I love to bless you with a joyful yeah, noise. Definitely, let's do that for sure. So, um, and I do want you to get you your do your Jesus saves. Okay, uh, amen. Shout, shout, that shout. You do on the yeah, yeah, right. proclamation. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Yeah. All right, so so we're going on to the five topics. Okay, and so you chose. Heroes of the faith. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So give us your five heroes of the faith. Yeah. Well, you know, of course, by far, Jesus yeah, the Christ. Yeah. Sure. I mean, and um, uh, getting back to the question you asked first, when did I, did I understand about being a man? Mm -hmm. And I think this is when it clicked on me about manhood. And this is what I say for any man that this is when you become a man, and not based on my opinion or my philosophy. Um, but based on the word of God mm -hmm. and the Bible says, uh, and a matter of fact, Jesus Christ himself said, if any man comes after me, he must do three things. Mm -hmm. Number one, deny yourself. Right. Number two, pick up your cross. And then number three, follow me. Yeah. So that's when I understood about being a man. Mm -hmm. When I studied, I had a guy ask me, he said, Sam, have you done an exhaustive study of eschatology in the end times? And I said, <laughs> you know, I love eschatology. I love the end times. I love preaching sure. and teaching about that. But I have to be honest with him. I said, no, I hadn't done yeah. one in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, Sam, so what do you do an exhaustive study of? You know what I told him, brother? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so by far, my hero of the faith is yeah. Jesus. That's when awesome. you study Jesus, he's the blueprint. Yep. You know, I mean, I'm I'm just like man's man. I mean, he's a man's man. I mean, he went against the grain of of the society of the culture of the system. You know what I mean? But he was all about his father's business. You know, and he never committed a sin. Never thought. Never spoke a bad word or with actions with his hands. So by far. He's my hero in yeah. the faith. Yeah. And then for me, the Apostle Paul. Okay. Yeah. I personally don't think that there's going to be a greater Christian mm -hmm. in the kingdom of God than the Apostle Paul. Yeah. Now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that's just my opinion. Now, Jesus said, if you remember, there's none born greater of a woman right. than John the Baptist. Yeah. Well, and that's another go. That's another one of my ears. Because I got that John the Baptist syndrome. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm <laughs> in the world in this car. Yeah. Yeah. So I can relate to John the Baptist. I, I went to the same university he went to. I went to JU. Jesus, you know. <laughs> yeah. did, you, so, did, you, did you eat locusts? Too? Yeah, yeah, I'm making on that. I need to eat some locusts. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so by far, Jesus Christ, then the Apostle Paul. I don't think anybody has affected the kingdom of God yeah, yeah. like the Apostle Paul. I don't think, you know, especially the, the world gets the it, it, the world will tell you things are getting better. We got new ingenuities and new medicines and all this. People are living longer. Blah, blah, blah. But truth be told, the world is getting worse. Yeah. And the Bible says it's what the Bible calls an apostasy, an apostate time. This is the time we're living in. People are going to say evil's good, good is evil. We're there already. We are. So I said that to say you won't see a man greater than apostle paul in my eyes by far that effect my life verse so many verses we probably could quote what not probably came from the right. you know pauline letters yeah. and epistles yeah but my my life verse by the way is philippians 121 
Yeah. And Philippians 121 says, for me to live is Christ mm -hmm. and to die is gain. Yeah. That's my whole life. It's all about Jesus Christ. And then to be absent from this body is to be present with my Lord, yeah. you know. And so he always and he always made the statements when he was in his in the most dire situations. Mm -hmm. It seemed mm -hmm. so, but mm -hmm. he, he didn't have any doubt. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. So so Jesus, one of my heroes of the faith, Apostle Paul, um, uh, um, John the Baptist. Because um, what amazed me about John? Get you one of them coat ones. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I like that. I'll be different. Uh, we strike up conversation, right? Uh, <laughs> but but for me, when you read that passage and that story about John the Baptist, it amazes me that the Bible says that people came into the woods, in the wilderness, to hear John preach. And they thought he was a lodger. They thought he was some crazy prophet. I mean, they didn't go to the big fancy uh, cities, me mega coliseums. Coliseums, no, yeah, amen. The mega churches. Yeah. He was one crying in the wilderness, yeah. repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And I do street evangelizing, and I tell people, I would love for people to come hear Sam, you know, on the street corners. Well, come, excuse me, come hear Jesus through Sam. Sure. No, we know. Amen. Right, right. But uh, it, it, uptown, in any town, city you go to, like I'm going to be going to the Daytona Beach Bike Week here, and they don't want to hear about the gospel no, of Jesus. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? They want to enjoy their yeah. sin, their entertainment, their, you know. And so, partying. yeah, I would love for people to come hear the gospel, yeah. but but sure, surely sometimes they do, though. Yeah, they? yeah, some, yeah. yeah, some do. Yeah, it's a season of encouragement. And they're hearing it anyway. Yeah, but yeah. Oh yeah, God said His word won't return void. Yeah. But um, so um, another uh, hero of the faith is Joseph in the Old Testament. Well, excuse me. Let me say before Joseph, okay. one one more Peter. Yeah, yeah. And I'm pretty sure we can all want, yeah. he can relate to Peter, right? Yeah. In order to be Put your foot in your mouth. Yeah, insert <laughs> open mouth, insert foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a, as the saying goes, wanted to be like uh, preached like Paul, but ended up being like Peter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but I love yeah, Peter's pick me, zeal. Pick me, pick me, yeah, and then run the other. Yeah, way. yeah, yeah. Deny yeah. the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the and the and the arrogance sometimes mm -hmm. and all that. I mean, gotta yeah. admire him. Yeah, he was so human. Yeah, but he had a great zeal for it. Of course. Not. Yeah, I mean, and, and that reminds us of me. You know, probably you can relate to Peter. You know that. God used, I mean, this was a fisherman, a cursor, yeah. a swear, you know, one of these bad mouth guys, and God used him like never before. I'm thinking about the account in, in the Bible, and actually John wrote it, you know, John, the beloved, the yeah. disciple, he always called himself the yeah. beloved, the, the, the disciple whom Jesus He's loved, loved. Yeah. yeah, and so he writes the account about, um, you know, when Jesus Christ, the tomb was empty. You remember that account? And they were racing, they were racing, running to the tomb. And he even brags on himself. He's like, yeah, and the disciple who Jesus loved got there first. Right. <laughs> like, man, fantastic in you, man, to write that in scripture. Yeah. But I love it when you read into it. Yeah. It says, yeah, uh, John got there first, but, but who went in there first? Peter. 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 Yeah, yeah, I can see John. He just, <laughs> hey, yeah. John's peeking in there. Should I go in there? Right. Should I go in peace? Like, get out the yeah. way. <laughs> Just like Peter. So I love yeah. Peter. Yeah, cut off the ears. Yeah. That's just like us. But jumping God in, uses yeah, jumping in with yeah. feet. Yeah. And then, um, of course, Joseph in the yeah. Old Testament. Yeah. That was the first book that I read in the Old Testament. That is yeah. where I saw Jesus. The integrity. I saw Jesus. I was like, Joseph is Jesus. You know, so many parallels. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but then there's men of the faith too that um, I, yeah. I have yeah. uh, influenced that have influenced my life. Um, I don't know if you know Adrian Rogers. Yeah, uh, Adrian Rogers. Yeah. I never met the man, yeah. but this man has ha has helped yeah. me develop. Yeah. Uh, you know, thank God for technology because his message still goes on. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's passed. Mm. Two thousand and five. Okay, two thousand and five. Yeah. So um, I listen to him every day, just about every day. He comes on BBN every day at nine thirty right. in the morning. So Bible Broadcasting Network. So I listen to him there. I you listen to him on YouTube and whatnot. So Adrian Rogers has yep. been a man uh, that's helped me develop as a man of faith. And then also, I don't know if you ever heard of Stephen Davey. Mm -hmm. Stephen mm -hmm. Davey, yeah, he's from, uh, I think it's Mount Erie, North Carolina. He um, He's a good man of faith. He actually went to the school I went to. Uh, I, 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 I didn't know it initially, but yeah. then I found out. I was like, oh, he went to Bob Jones University. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, and he went to Bob Jones? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I went nice. to Bob Jones, yes. And, but you can't tell by the way I act, and you know, <laughs> back in my days, I would be 
demanded and kicked out because they didn't do all that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very disciplined schools. Yeah. The gifts of discipline. Yeah, I was going to say there's been a lot of uh, really great men that come out of come out of there. So mm-hmm. there you go. Yeah. So yeah. Stephen Daly, Adrian Rogers, those have been some good men. Uh, I'm pretty sure you've heard of um, J. Vernon McGee. Oh yeah. 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 His church is um, through the Bible. Yeah, through the Bible, mm-hmm. and he's out of um, uh, he was out of um, of um, Los Angeles, okay. but. You heard him, right? Yeah. He's got this old country accent. Yeah. He sounds like I was him. like, man, how do you manage a church in yeah. California, yeah. Los Angeles? Yeah. But he's got that country accent. And I'm hey, beyond. And his ministry has also carried on. Well yeah, beyond yeah, yeah. Passion, so. And that's John 15. That's what Jesus said. Well, he said, I want you to live a fruitful life. Mm-hmm. After I called you off this world, that your work is still yeah, going on for the kingdom of God. Billy Graham, yeah, he's another oh, man of the faith. Yeah. I volunteer out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I do so, Operation Christmas Child. Well, I, we do it every year at the church, and I I served there a couple mm-hmm. years. Uh, so it's pretty amazing. Yeah, they, but the whole the whole everything they do there is really yeah. Awesome. Oh, but Billy Graham's been. I think I'm pretty sure Billy Graham has been mentioned just about every time and on almost every podcast. Mm-hmm. I love him. Yeah, I don't worship him, but I look yeah. and I yeah. learn from him, right. and I'm like, wow. Right. Right. Never uh, a, a, man. A, 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 a simple little farm boy from Charlotte, North yeah. Carolina. Yeah. Who, who who would have not even gotten saved mm-hmm. had he not followed the uh, you know the calling to go to the take three saved mm-hmm. right yeah Billy yeah. Sunday yeah 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 and, yeah. 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 and how yeah Billy Sunday uh, who was the guy from Moody yeah. yeah Moody all of them had the influences Moody. in his life and who was fired you read it yeah 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 and that's what like, we, we have an influence on one another. And that's what um, Paul said with some stuff. He said he looked to see every man perfected in Christ Jesus. We wanted to take a man higher than himself. You know what I mean? And that's what we ought to do as brethren, body of Christ. You know, it shouldn't be no envy and strife, back, back, backbiting or jealousy going on. We should be looking to, as the Bible says, iron sharpened of iron. Right. So, right. Yeah. So there, listen, you are affecting somebody's mm. life. You are touching. You are inspiring. You may not see that. Mm-hmm. You may not see that before you pass away. I will tell the, tell you this, being nine years older than you, that I I do believe that God does show you some of that though as you get older. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think that's where the season part comes in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With, when when the saints begin to relax a little bit in knowing that yes, God has used them well, mm-hmm. because you do start to see some of the effects yeah. of your ministry the fruits of yeah, your labor absolutely yeah i love so, it oh yeah i'm at that point in my life yeah. this brother when i came out into the streets yeah. i was the city of charlotte's m- most hated yeah. uh um, in, public enemy number one like the corporate uptown the bank of America, because you know it's a banking hub yeah and so they i, I had christian police officers captains high ups that were telling me uh sam he said, we got a, uh, we're going to a meeting tonight. And he said, I said, oh, okay, what's going on? He's like, it's a meeting about you. Like you wow. I said, wow. I said, can I go? He said, no. <laughs> but um, he would you tell me. Get rid of you. Right. right. He would tell me who would say what and what. And it shocked me. Some of the people that pat me on the back. Wow. We love what you do. Give me a bottle of water. They were coming at me in the meeting. Want me removed. And he was telling me what, basically what they were trying to do is get a city ordinance passed where Sam, but they could not be no on the street way. from nine to five. Wow. Because they said I, they felt like I was a, a disturbance because I'm loud and I was a nuisance wow. and it was affecting their their work up town. Mm-hmm. And um, he told me that the police or the captains and, you know, the, the, the men that were in the meeting said they wouldn't go touch that. Mm-hmm. Said that, you know, number one, he's not breaking the law. Right. He's not amplifying his voice. He's. And then number two, he's exercising his First Amendment. Amplified. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's exercising his First Amendment yeah. of, you know, rights. So you might be careful yeah. if you touch that. That's what so he tried to pass us. Yeah. <laughs> so I said that to say, yeah, and when I first began, yeah. and now it's almost 10 years later now, you're it's a of season the, of, of encouragement. Yeah, because you're It's part unbelievable all the love. Be there, right? And now I'm waiting for that season of co-labors ah, where men will yeah. come out particularly men, yeah. but who, I, you know, the church, yeah. but I would love to co-labor with men to right. come out and have a uh, passion for God's word and compassion for God's people. Well, and that's another reason we do this and the men's conferences mm-hmm. because somewhere, somehow, some way, there's a place for you to fit into mm-hmm. a ministry out there, guys. Amen. We don't know where that is. God knows where it is. Amen. You might be a street preacher. You might be a podcast preacher. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You might be, who knows, whatever God's got for mm-hmm. you. I wasn't planning on doing men's ministry. Yeah. I've told this before. In 2012, my pastor asked me, and I'm like, 
men's ministry? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, sure. Well, you know, I, I prayed about it, thought about it. I said, okay. Had no clue, mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. idea what mm-hmm. it would lead into mm-hmm. and the amazing things mm-hmm. that he yeah. does. Yeah. You know, that wasn't my choice mm-hmm. initially, mm-hmm. but that's okay. So do whatever God calls you to do. Yeah. And if it's street preaching, go out and join us. Come on, let's <laughs> <it. laughs> but, uh, but brother, I'm like you. That's one of the main verses and thoughts that's come to my heart being out there on the streets is that verse that says my ways aren't your ways yeah. my thoughts aren't your thoughts yeah. so much higher god's ways god is just so he's taken me off that path that i wanted to go or that i planned to go sure. and then he took me on another he path plans, and it's right? like that show back in the days father knows best yeah as I, i'm always saying that father knows, father knows best, best. Yeah, yeah. Right, cool. yeah all right good so there's your heroes we got all your heroes amen good so now what we're going to do is jump into the, we've been having fun anyway, but we'll go into the more the more laid back part, okay. which is going to be your sports related story. Mm. Before you tell us a sports related story, okay. you may not know this, but you get some door prizes. <laughs> door so, prizes. Yeah. So here you go. Some parting, parting gifts. So your first parting gift is a bottle of Mr. Bill's STEM education hand sanitizer. I know you will put that to good use. I will. So that's, this was, uh, Mr. This, Bill. that's the shameless plug. You got for, his logo. Yeah. That's the shameless plug for my uh, STEM education and my photography. Uh, stuff. Both of, that's yours. Thank you, brother. Thank you. you also, you. we'll get an... I will autograph this before you wow, see. Wow, look and at I'll that. Put, I'll put number 52. Look at that. A Willie A. Chicago Cubs official, Chicago Cubs baseball Come on, card. collector's and edition. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I will autograph it so that it will be worth exactly what it is when you leave this room. Whatever that means. But I'll autograph that before Thank you, you leave. Brother. And you get to choose a Lego superhero. Oh, come on. I have my own. Which is Iron Man, and you say you say to yourself, "Why a Lego superhero?" Or you or you say to us, "Why a Lego superhero?" I missed it. Why, oh, why a Lego superhero? <laughs> because first of all, the STEM education, STEM science, technology, engineering. Engineering is building. Okay, you have to build the Lego superhero. Okay, mm-hmm. so there's the engineering, and wow. also because we believe that the men. Uh, that come through here in God's eyes are superheroes. Oh, so thank you. You get to choose. Now the problem with this batch was they sent me some I didn't recognize. So anyway, I do recognize that. That's a Spider Man. Okay. I think. That's Spider. Oh wait. Hope that's not Deadpool. I got rid of Deadpool. We don't want Deadpool. Nope, that's Deadpool. I thought I got rid of him. We don't want him. He's not good. Uh, I'm not sure who that. Oh, that's Iron Woman. Okay. Iron, <laughs> Iron Man's wife. All right, got to get rid of that too, right? Uh, I'm not sure what that one is. Loki. I don't know if you want Loki. Do you know any of these? Uh-uh. That's a, that's an Iron Man. Wow, you got choices, man. Yeah. So here, let's see. I like that one. What's this one right here? That's this uh, one. This one. I think it was this one. This one here? No, the next one. This right here. Right here. Oh, that one. So yeah. that is. I'm not exactly sure who that is because no, it okay. has long hair. Okay. I, what I thought. It's, it really, it I thought it was. Be, I thought it was like the arm of faith. I thought oh. it was the helmet of salvation. Yes, I thought, you, know, I that. you know what would be good <laughs> if we have Thor in here? That would be good. Yeah. Because Thor. Well, there's a there's Thor. Yeah. There's Thor. Yeah. Hey, there you go. He's got the, he's got the, the hammer. hammer. Yeah. yeah. There you, there you go. go. Cool. I like that. So, and I had that's a, what the word is a hammer, right? I did have one that I need to give to my wife, and I don't know what I did with it. She likes Groot. <laughs> I had a Groot. No, I can't find it. Anyway. Thank you, brother. So, yeah. So there's your superhero. I'll autograph the card, yeah, and now you get to tell us your sports related story. Any uh, sports related story. Okay, like my best sport. Or sure. Yeah. Any, yeah. You're, yeah. So growing up, um, I started late. My 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 when my dad was at home, he kept us in the house. You know, I mean, they did you know summer camps and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But I was a homebody. And then when him and my mom went through a divorce, that's when I hit the streets. Oh, yeah. We played basketball oh, from yeah. sun up to sundown. Right. So I wanted to be a basketball player, and so basketball was my idol. Um, football, we played those two sports mainly: basketball and football. Right. Um, but by far, my favorite sport is boxing. No way. I love boxing. Yeah. Right. Boxing is the oldest sport there is. Yeah. You know, the Apostle Paul was a, 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 a right. boxing fan, so to say, against yeah. that culture. Yeah. Paul said, when I throw a punch, I'm not one that beats the air. In other words, he's not sparring. He's right. not uh, uh, like a boxer. He says, when I throw punches, boom, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to hit something. Yeah. So yeah. I like that analogy. But and boxing teaches you a lot about life. 
I mean, you probably some of your sayings, you know, uh, come from boxing. You know, some of the little cliches and stuff that yeah. we've come up with. I can't think of none now, but it's so much, uh, you know, that deals with life. Yeah. And um, I saw a wonderful boxing clip here just past. Um, I, actually, I shared it on my Facebook post. And I actually saw the fight where this boxer had been knocked out three times. Woo. Three times. Yeah. And it looked like it was over for him. It looked like the ref was about to stop the fight. It was a, you know, a no, uh, three knockdown, no rules right. in effect, you know. Um, but the ref looked like he was about ready to stop, stop the fight. Yeah. And this man, and they were, they were playing the Rocky. Dun, 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 <laughs> and they showed him come back. Mm -hmm. I mean, he knocked the guy out. They, well, the ref had to stop the fight because yeah. the guy was hurt real bad and, you know, had it continued, he probably would have been hurt real sure, bad. Yeah. But it just showed me about life, you know, that we never give up. Yeah. Never give up. Not you know, punches. you don't, amen. Yeah, yeah, stick and move. That's the name of the game, right? Throw a little jab to Satan. Don't let, boop, boop, don't let him knock go, you out. Exactly. But they call it sweet science, too. Yeah. And people don't know that. But boxing okay. is called sweet science because it's a science to sure. it. It's yeah. a, yeah, it's a, just go in there. Right, exactly, right. Away, yeah. yeah, throwing haymakers and yeah. track. No, you got to. Well, I, see, I grew up on Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. and Sugar Ray, yeah. Ray, oh, and those Sugar Ray were, Leonard, and all. Yeah, those were the golden years, years of boxing. Years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And so uh, I love boxing because I compare it to like, um, you know, to where we are Christian. You know, yeah. you know, yep. it's fight a fight. Good fight. Fight the good fight. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. All right, so we got the so we got the uh, you already got your yell in there. Yeah, your shout. Jesus save! He loves you guys. <laughs> Listen, if you have not been on the streets of Charlotte and heard that, then you've never been on the streets of Charlotte. Yeah, right. You hear it. You know he's yeah. out there. So you were at the you were at the uh Trump uh, one of the Trump Oh, I was there from I was there looking Yeah, I, you talking about D C yeah, uh, no, weren't you in you were in Charlotte? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I was in D C. I oh, thought you were talking about yeah, I was there five months. Right. I went there for two months, but God wow. put, okay. so I was there at the Resurrection of Christ. I don't know about no insurrection that they call it. You know, it was the re we were celebrating the resurrection of Christ. Yeah, so I was there, but I didn't go in the yard. I didn't go in the buildings. Of course, actually, I was crying. I was trying to, you know, guys, it's not what we're about. You know, but I mean, yeah, we we had some bad elements that were infiltrating. You know, you know, yeah. It was, but I I told him I said, you know what? If we when they went up there, you know what they should have did, brother. March around the Capitol seven right, times, right, yeah. like the Jericho yeah. walls. Let's march around this, or let's just drop to our knees and pray for our nation. Yeah. See, That's what should have happened. You came from a past like I did, and you know that if somebody's standing there going, come on in, mm -hmm. you're going to go the other direction. Right, right. right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Come yeah. on now. And, 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 you know, set up, look right. at me. I got on the orange vest, the yellow <laughs> sign. Yeah. There's the Jesus same <laughs> guy. Let's go. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, all right. So, um. So yeah, so you said you wanted to sing for us. Oh yes. Oh um, wow. We finally got we finally got somebody to sing. Yeah. So far, well, I, that's not true. I had somebody else did sing one. Oh, okay. Well, I want to sing a couple, but I'm gonna sing one, and mainly it's for all Christians, um, but specifically for us men. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, guys, I got the gift of making a joyful noise. Amen. Um, brother here has the gift of singing. He's got a good voice. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. But um, let me bless you with just making a joyful noise unto the Lord. That's who I'm singing unto. Right. I got a witness uh, audience of one. Amen. Yeah. But I hope this blesses my brothers and my sisters in yeah. Christ. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. Souls for Jesus is about to cry. Souls for Jesus will fight until we die. We never will give in. While souls are lost in sin, so for Jesus is about to cry. Is it your battle cry? Man, that's awesome. I love it. Thank you, brother. That's fantastic. Thank cool you. deal. Well, listen, I sure appreciate mm -hmm. appreciate you being here. Mm, thank Maybe you. We'll get you back here for another one. Please. And talk about some other stuff. Let's like do it. Stuff. May God bless your ministry out there. I know you're doing great things. Thank Guys, you. listen, thank you for being here. Thank you, Sam. Uh, thank Appreciate you. you. God thank bless you. you. God Thanks bless. for being here on the Greater Purpose Podcast. Amen. Hallelujah.